Thousands were dying every day. It was a mercy mission. The Dutch will never ever forget what they have done. They never forget you. It was a miracle. Thank you, boys. Operation Manor was an operation devised by the British government and the Dutch to drop food to the starving Dutch people in northwest Holland. Operation Manor, of course, was the, the very first time in the history of military aviation that bomber aircraft were used to drop food rather than bombs. I mean, nowadays, they are dropping food all over the place wherever they need it, but that was the very first time. The relief operation by the RAF, the Americans called it Operation Chowhound, with uh, the landings of the paratroopers during Operation Market Garden, the Dutch railways had gone on strike, and as a punishment, uh, the German occupying authorities decided that trains were no longer to be used to transport food for the Dutch. And uh, we had to live from the stores we had. And with the defeat of the Germans in October 1944, when uh, many German troops came and withdrew into what they called Fortress Holland, we suddenly had 600,000 German troops who were entitled to four times the rations of Dutch civilians who were also eating from that uh, storage. So basically the first victims of uh, the hunger winter, the very severe winter we had in 44-45, were the poor people, the old people who couldn't fend for themselves, and the children. Reserves were nil, and there were no seeds. And then when we were isolated by not having any food in the shops, no milk, no electricity, no uh, light or anything like that, or gas, we were starving. And there were about, I think it was about 20,000 people died of hunger. And something needed to be done. In February 1945, Prince Bernhard, the grandfather of our present king, got information from the resistance that the starving had gone to a horrible climax. And he got in touch with his mother-in-law, Queen Wilhelmina, who was living in London. And she wrote a letter to King George saying that if something drastically wasn't done immediately, the liberation of Western Holland would merely be a liberation of corpses and Churchill agreed that something had to be done. And that is how the request, or rather the order, came to General Eisenhower that he had to do something to help the Dutch. And of course, the only easy way, immediately, was in fact, of course, to drop food from an aeroplane. And that is really how it all started. And he got in touch with Air Commodore Andrew Geddes. And Geddes was given five days to devise, negotiate, organize food drops over the Netherlands with bombers. Because Germany had been bombed so intensely that really there were no targets left. The only bombing that still was uh, at that time useful was so-called tactical bombing, bridges, viaducts, barges. So uh, Geddes decided that the Lancasters and the B-17 Flying Fortresses uh, could be used for food dropping. Uh, he went to Holland and he met the Germans between the lines. He negotiated with them. Well, he didn't negotiate, he told them. And the Germans in the end uh, did not agree, did not disagree. So Geddes said, well, whatever you sign or don't sign, the drops will start tomorrow. If we were going to drop food from an aeroplane, of course, we had to have some form of protection. That was the reason why there was a, eventually a truce signed. But the RAF being with the RAF, knowing what the critical state the uh, poor old souls were in Holland, two days before the truce was signed, 
the RAF went in, dropped food. And we had a truce with the Germans that we could go and drop food. They actually ring the dropping zones with anti-aircraft guns in case we were dropping arms and ammunition instead of food. But our orders were that even if we were fired on, we weren't to fire back. It was a mercy mission. The people in that northwest part of Holland really were starving. They were dying by the thousands every day. I've seen pictures of little kids going down dustbins, scraping out the rubbish with their finger to eat. You can't, you, I, I don't think really we've ever been in a situation where you can conceive what it was really like. Well, the first time I heard about it was when we were actually going. It was a, a sudden thing. You, we didn't have a lot of warning about it. We didn't have radios. The Germans didn't want us to know the British side. They wanted only their side, and that was nothing but boast and how clever and, and good that they were. But my uncle, who was in the merchant navy, but very clever with electrics and so on, he somehow concocted a radio where we could get BBC. And then, of course, uh, they were mentioning that they were planning to drop the food. Oh, boy. We were absolutely jumping up and down. We had, couldn't tell anybody, you know, outside the family. But we were really so curious how that was going to happen. Gaddis had done his homework very well. Through the uh, intelligence services of the Allies, he knew exactly what German airfields had been made useless by the Germans. He also knew spots in Holland where you could drop food without uh, hitting civilians. And these areas uh, were marked by Bomber Command with mosquitoes that dropped markers. And in the middle of the flares that had been dropped, they just dropped the food. The British dropped burlap sacks with uh, meat and vegetables in it, or tins with biscuits, egg powders. The Dutch had no clue what egg powder was. I can still see the tin was about that size, square, you know, metal, and uh, with a lid in it. And then you had milk powder, uh, milk powder, yeah, egg powder, uh, whale meat. Absolutely, Cho chocolate. Oh yeah, we, I didn't know what chocolate was. Yeah, and that was oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, that this uh, the uh, excitement. My role in operation, I was the rear gunner. But the, the everlasting memory that I had is as we crossed the coast, was a young lad on the top of a dike surrounded by water and he was astride his bicycle and he had the Union Jack and the Dutch Tricolor and he was waving. It was amazing, the most rewarding uh, flights of um, all my flying times, going over to Holland and seeing l women on the housetops waving uh, to us and waving uh, uh, flags and uh, then running out to collect food from the dropping zone. It was most rewarding. And then there came the aircraft, there was the Lancaster. And it was so low that we could see the food inside. And I could see the pilot's face. Oh boy, I can, I can still feel the excitement of that occasion. Oh boy, you, you heard the noise. Oh no, it's just the music. <laughs> that aircraft makes music. That was fantastic. Yeah, and then when you see him come down that low, and even now, you know, when, when I hear them, yeah, it touches a string. 
and no one in England has any idea what it means when you suddenly see these bombers that you only heard at night and that you saw as little shiny specks in the air during the day suddenly came over at 500 feet where you could actually see the air crew waving at you. And then the bomb base opened and food came out. No bombs. I think we started the home delivery campaign because the bomb aimer said, it's all gone. No, it hasn't. We've got a hang up. And the skipper flicked the aircraft. And because I'm in the rear turret, I could see exactly what happened. It could have gone anywhere into the water, into the clouds. Fortunately, it took an upstairs window in a house, so they had a delivery of food to the door. <laughs> I was sitting in my rear turret. And of course, I see everything after it's happened. <laughs> um, I remember seeing the uh, white flare and I remember seeing our food falling out of our airplane onto the ground. I had this little camera and I, I'm not sure if somebody said to me, could you take any photographs or anything else? But I managed to scrounge some, what was it, 120 film in those days from the uh, photographic section. And uh, because we were low level and it was daylight, I could take pictures and pictures I took and of course you've seen them. I thought they were rather unique. I, I don't think to my knowledge there's any others like it because it shows the, the flooded parts of Holland that we flew over. And it also showed the dropping zone and some of the buildings over the docks when we were running in. Our airplane was over Obo, so then we put over here, over here, spam, one and six, you know, something else at the price. We just wrote these silly things, you know, because we knew that they could read it on the side of the airplane as we flew past. It was our little cute bit of touch of humour, if you like, you know, for the Dutch. It was psychological as well as physical. You know, that uh, people had given up hope. And when you give up hope and you get depressed, that doesn't help. We were doing something which is benefiting our friends and allies. And uh, to see the females and the children uh, sh sh uh, waving to us and cheering us on, uh, it, it would... Uh, make anybody enthusiastic about what he was doing. We were all very elated to go in at that height and uh, everybody was up in the air about the fact that we managed to drop the food. And it's just a wonderful feeling. That must be something so satisfying. And that is so lovely to hear that that was their reaction. Because of course never did we get any response of their point of view. Eee, that is in very interesting. The uh, estimate was that four and a half million people would have died instead of 350,000. If nothing had been done. It would also have meant that um, I would not have been born. I was born exactly nine months after the liberation because my parents, at least my mother, would have died. Uh, it had an impact on my generation and we are eternally grateful to the food droppers, the flying grocers of 1945 because they saved our lives. Freedom does not come for free. Freedom has a high price. 
and many of your fellow countrymen paid that price. Thank you, Bomber Boys. Thank you for saving us. God bless the flying grosses of April and May 1945. Thank you. It's, it's very funny. I'm looking at my friend Bernie. Hi. He, he is one of the full droppers. And we've been friends for 40 years now. And seeing him always makes me very emotional because he's one of the men that I owe my life to. The Dutch will never ever forget what they have done. That was, that was a miracle. And we would never ever forget. And because of that, we survived. And that is why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Again, it gives me uh, an opportunity. Also, on behalf of my parents, to go there and say thank you. That's all.